a little little dusty microphone here. Is this is this thing working properly? Uh, it's been it's been a long long time since we've posted a video here. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you that uh, still remember us, my name is uh, Ryan. Uh, with the Roundtable of Wraith, I am joined here by my uh, partner in crime, Mr. Sean, I mean, Jim Welsh here, wearing his Rams gear. Excited for the Rams Super Bowl, Jim. How are we feeling? I'm feeling there like, we go. hopefully it's going to be a dub, baby. Yeah, right. Dude, it is It is good to be making content again. How are you uh, feeling about just the game in general? I know... Those of you guys that, uh, you know, follow our channel and are familiar with our channel, uh, we have taken kind of a little bit of a hiatus. Uh, and uh, I know Chris has kind of been doing the Lord's work, posting some videos here and there about, you know, just random stuff, getting some, you know, activity on the channel. Uh, and the, the, the reasoning behind that is after Nationals happened, kind of all of us felt like a little bit of a lull in the game. And we talked about it a little bit. And we don't want to just put out content for content's sake. We don't want to just put out stuff that, you know, might be mindless that, you know, just so we can get hits on our channel. We want to put out content that you know, people come to our channel and, you know, get something out of or something that people can make fun of us about, whatever it is. <laughs> but we're not going to put out content just to just to have uh, videos on YouTube. So with that being said, Everfest dropped this weekend. It, in our eyes, is an amazing set. It is so, so, so good. Uh, there's so many cards to, to, you know, talk about from the tops of the tallest mountains. And over this series of videos, we're going to break down each individual class. Uh, today, we're going to start with Warrior. Uh, and we're going to talk about the class-specific cards that Warrior got this set. Uh, but overall, Jim, how have you been feeling? I know you're another one. You took a little bit of a hiatus. How have you felt about Everfest so far? Yeah, I think I think it just needed a little um, diversifying of uh, of hobbies. We we got into uh, Star Wars Legion, and we were building mm -hmm. minis and painting minis, and we just took a little break from Flesh and Blood. Not necessarily like you know retired, but we just took a break. We wanted to switch up our focus um, and just you know get into something else and then uh like ryan said um with the the release of everfest i feel rejuvenated and i'm ready to uh get back into the swing of things get my competitive uh card game brain working again and we met up today and and played and today being the day two of the release in america like uh, released yesterday and so we met up today and played some games and had some fun so i'm ready to roll my friend nice yeah i i think that's the consensus i think a lot of people that like reading the community you know it, value wise people that are you know trying to make a buck this isn't the best set i feel and i i actually like that trend but in terms of like shaking up the meta and also allowing for new archetypes to kind of rise that you know haven't necessarily uh existed before i i really like how this set was printed i like the cards i think it's really creative i think uh there's so many new avenues that can go into a lot of classes and that's just overall that's just fun and I think the class that we're going to talk about today, Warrior, uh, got a little bit of a, a uh, an awakening, uh, a little bit of a jump start that they needed because I think, you know, last meta they were a little bit dead in the water. I think they were kind of unplayable. Bolton was Holden, Bolton had some play, especially combo sabers. But now I think it opens up this set, especially opens up a new avenue that this class did not have before. So... We're going to take a deep dive into the cards that Warrior got this set. Uh, we'll just, you know, give our initial thoughts and what we think about them. Uh, and if you agree, disagree, make, want, to, make, want to make comments or anything like that, uh, you know, always leave comments. We'll, we're, we're pretty good at responding to people, uh, you know, asking questions and stuff. Um, I will say before we get into this, uh, I am kind of dedicating this cycle for ProQuest. I want to see if hatchet dorinthia is a thing and that's the deck that i built first uh so a lot of these cards are 
or have me particularly excited because uh, the, I, I think they're legit. And I think that deck in particular is very good. So uh, we're going to start off with talking about uh, Outland Skirmish. It is a common from, um, or, or the common red is your next one-handed weapon attack this turn gains plus three. Uh, the next time a weapon attack hits this turn, create a copper token, go again. It blocks for three. The red pitch is costing zero. All of them cost zero. Uh, and yeah, this is this is a pretty interesting card. Jim, initially, what, do you, what are your thoughts on uh, Outland Skirmish? Kind of like the uh, the text on it, I think of of Kasai pretty heavily, and I know you used it today um, with Dorinthia, but you can see the you know whatever she says there. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce those words. I'm not doing it. But <laughs> Kasai has the quote, and um, generating copper tokens is what she wants to do. Um, so this is an auto include and takes the place of. Um, to zero cost or your next one hand weapon attack warrior action. So this is like a what's I'd spent a long time since I've played warrior. Sharp, uh, sharp, sharpen, sharpen steel. steel. This is like a better sharpen steel, um, especially um, in Kasai. So in Kasai's viewpoint, excellent if you're going sabers. But then also, I'll flip it to you. We're playing this card today, and you were doing Dory axes. Um, same same thing right like you didn't you were making and creating copper as well with spoils of war so you see this card as being played in in both uh like a sabers blitz with kasai but also could be with uh dory axis yeah i mean if you're so if you're going dory or even bolt in one hand and you were running sharp and steel before this just replaces it because it's the same exact thing with just a better additional clause like there's no reason to run this over sharpen seal uh you can run this with so that's what i've been doing is the six slots six or uh, three red sharpen steels uh three red outland skirmishes and if i were to cut a slot from that deck it would be the three sharpen steels i definitely think you need at least three of those cards in there and this one would obviously edge it out the the question is do you need all six but yeah this is uh, a phenomenal card if you're running one-handed weapons uh i don't think even if you're not making as much copper as kasai uh you i think you still run this card it's, it's just a phenomenal card uh the the the, the sharpened steel plus copper it's great it's a great card uh i love i love this card i would i don't run blues or yellows right now uh, i probably wouldn't and sharpened steel didn't get really ran in that, those colors either but the red is definitely highly playable. Okay, moving along comes in the swing. Uh, I'll read this one. It's another zero cost. This time, instead of a warrior action, it is a warrior attack reaction. Uh, play in the swing only if you have attacked two or more times with weapons this turn. Target weapon attack gains plus three. So there's the stipulation as to why it's a zero cost attack creation that's boosting it by three. Um, heavy price to pay there. Uh, so this this would mean, I, and I know I'm, like I said, I'm not a necessarily a warrior player, but I know there's ways to attack more than two times uh, if you've attacked more than two times with weapons this turn so if you attack two or more two or more yeah, yeah so, so it would be your you don't have to it would have to be you don't have swing, no right? it, no it's so the the second time when you swing your second one-hander that is you attacking two so oh look and at it goes that. to attack reactions so you can play it on your second swing so okay be, well then that makes this a little better because yeah in my and, and I'm, it can't just be me who read it like that. Hopefully, this video. No, it's happen. it's very weirdly templated. Yeah. So, so you attack once. Once you've declared your attack with your weapon, you've Correct. attacked. Technically, you've attacked two times, even though the atta attack hasn't resolved. Correct. And so then the reaction on this this could kick in. So two. Or, I get it. So two or more. Well, yeah. I don't know. 
that makes it better. I, I thought it was like, oh, okay, if you can get to a third swing somehow with something, then this is where this would come into play. And I was like, oh, that's so bad. But now, this trash, seems, yeah. yeah, that would be trash. This seems um, a lot better. It just would feel bad if it's very circumstantial. I feel like there's probably better options to choose when it comes to warrior attack reactions. Um, however, if you are, if you're going, you know, all gas, no brakes, and you know every turn you're attacking two times, like no matter what's going down, you're not blocking and stuff, then this would be a fine add into your, your Kasai Blitz or for, I think, but that's if you're if you can guarantee you're gonna attack two times every turn with a weapon. What do you think? You're not gonna like this card. This is like one of my favorite cards in the set. Oh, I didn't think so. I wouldn't have. Oh, that. I run. I run. I ran three reds today when we were playing. Um, oh, did you? This card. Oh yeah, this card's insane. Um, my favorite part is that the team covenant uh, promo is actually this red card, and so I get to have three promos in the deck, which is like a humble brag. Um. But yeah, this card's very good. It's like the way that the deck is set up and not to spoil the later card in the set. Uh, but there's a card that we're going to talk about in a second, which is just the most broken card of all time. Um, and plus the nine hit and runs that came out in Crucible. You're always going to be swinging twice with hatchets at least. Uh, and so you're going to always get to that second swing. And this not having to be triggered by reprise you don't really care about that second clause if this was done the third swing this would be a terrible card because the third swing happens you know infrequently but if the fact that this can be played for free on the second swing just to give it a plus three buff great card i love this card um in the current hatchet build that i have is just uh three reds i don't run the blues or the yellows um but I, I really do enjoy this card. And you, if you guys, I know I keep referencing my build. Uh, if you need it or if you want it, I will be happy to post my current build uh, in the comment section if you guys are uh, looking to play Hatchet, Hatchet Dory. Yeah, or description, whatever. So, so, so you don't think it's like a feel bad if you have to defend for a turn and you end up with like, attacking with a weapon and then this is the other card in your hand i mean i don't feel bad i don't feel bad blocking with this card like this isn't my make or break card i would here's here's a thing i would rather have this card in my deck than iron song response the fact that i don't i know there's a clause that you have to swing right i don't have to rely on reprise in order to play this card i just have to attack with my second in between spoils and the card that we're going to talk about in a second called blade runner uh, hit and run, glint. I'm always getting to my second swing. And if I ever have to be defensive for a turn because, you know, they're throwing heat at me, I don't care about blocking with this card. This is not my win condition, and it blocks for three. So there's not much more that I can ask for from a card than a card that gives plus three for zero. All I have to do is get to my second swing, which I'm going to anyway. A card that blocks for three. Um, and, you know, and it it's just a zero coster. I, 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 I really do. I love this card. I think this card's very good. I think you, you, you made me change my mind about it. <laughs> it's, well, it's just, if it was, if it was the third swing, it would be terrible. Yeah. But the fact that it's on your second or later, you're always swinging on a decent turn. I mean, you can, with hatchet Dory, you can swing with two hatchets on a two card hand or it, with this card. If you have an arsenal for whatever reason, you can still use this. And turning your second hatchet, which seems, you know, uh, you know, a, a little lowly three, all of a sudden now it's a six. That's a big swing. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, cool. I like that. I like that you, we talked that out, and it makes me feel like I understand it now. And I and reading these and knowing what can possibly come, um, sure, when you're playing against warrior will help. All right, so then I know I'm going to let you read this one because you're all geeked up about uh, I am uh, Blade Runner. So go ahead. Yeah, we're talking about Blade Runner. And this is the only reason I think that Dorinthia is now playable. If it wasn't for this card, Dorinthia 
would not be playable. Oh, or I, 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 everywhere. I honestly think Warrior in general. Like Dawn Blade to me, and I, I apologize for those purists out there. Dawn Blade's a dead deck. You cannot play Dawn Blade in CC. If you want to win a tournament, you cannot play Dawn Blade. If you do win a tournament and you play Dawn Blade, then I will eat a shoe. I uh, I don't know. Well, it seems I don't know like how many people... all these cards in these set are for one hand weapons. Yeah, right. Well, the good ones are at least. Mm -hmm. This card is crazy. This is the best card for Warrior that we could have asked for. This is it's just bananas. Uh, the Blade Runner is a one cost reaction. The target one handed weapon attack gains go again. Your next weapon attack gains plus three. It blocks for three. That's the craziest thing. Some classes that don't have cards that block for three. This thing, this thing could block for one, and it was playable. Like mm -hmm. you would play this if it blocked for one. That's how crazy this card is. Yeah, because they go again in the buff, and it's like a sneaky go again. Like if you just a swing with a naked hatchet, like they're like, oh god damn it! Like this, mm -hmm. the Blade Runners come in now. The next hatchet. If you play a red, you swing hatchet, and you respond to it with this card. Your next hatchet's a six. Yeah, Think about that. For one. I, I pitch a blue. I pitch a blue. I swing hatchet for two. I play this card. I swing for six. That's one card. Two cards, I'm sorry. Playing this card. Two cards out of my hand. That's not including any other reactions. That's not including any other buffs. That's not including spill blood. Nothing else. Now attacking for eight like with two cards. That's on par with every other class. Warrior hasn't had that in a long time. It's really two card, two card swing eight. This card's cracked. You run this if you're playing hatchets. If you're playing sabers, you run nine of these. It, oh, it's you run you bottom. run all of them in your CC deck. Yeah, you run nine. You you put in that. These are the first nine cards you add. This card is insane. It's the only reason right now that Dorinthy has a chance. And not only do I think that she has a chance, I think she's a a top potential deck because of this card. This card is crazy. Okay, that's cool. And I like the art on it's cool. Uh, and obviously, it's the very card futuristic. Itself. Like, yeah, are they hinting like, at like, are we getting a dagger later? Like, are we getting it? Yeah, we should get a dagger of some sort yeah. all these like uh sec uh in the swing blade runner like they're all holding swords none of these people are holding axes so yeah give That's, us give us sneaky. some more give us some more one hand swords all right um i'll read the next one uh which is the rare that came out for this set for warrior um slice and dice a zero cost warrior action we're looking at the red one of course Whenever you attack with a sword or dagger this turn, so there's got to be a dagger coming eventually, right? There's no daggers yeah, right, right now, are there? No. Yeah, so whenever you attack with a sword or dagger this turn, pip number one, if it's your first weapon attack this turn, it gains plus one. If it's your second weapon attack this turn, it gains plus three. Go again. So let me ask you this, Mr. Warrior Player. Why is this the rare and not the card we just read? Like what? 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 What makes this card a little? What's the spice with this card? Why is it? Crazy? This card's this card's very good. It's just you can't run it with axes, so that's kind of a downside. Um, Flesh and blood LSS has always done the thing where you know all the power is found in the commons, and that's where they want it to lie, and that's why Blade Runner is insane. It's universal. It's such a good card. This card's very good. Um, if we get a dagger soon, which obviously we will eventually, because I think this card, I think Razor Reflex might mention dagger as well. I, I might be wrong on that, but this, I don't think this is the first card to mention dagger. Uh, we're, I mean, this card's good as it is. If you're going to play uh, Centauri Sabres, this card is obviously a three of potentially a nine of so you play um, this first and then for the whole for your whole turn your first sword attack gets plus one and then your second one gets plus three yeah it doesn't stay around the whole time but it just gains plus one plus three but yeah, well, so, it, like, yeah but so like you play it let's say you played this and then even attack. dawn blade even dawn blade so you play this card and then you attack with your first centauri saber that attack has plus one 
Yeah. Bad attack resolves. You give it go again somehow, and then the next swing would have plus three. Yeah, or Dawn Blade. You swing. The first attack is, like, now four. If you can go over the top and then give it go again, your next attack then would be six. No, that's so this card, that is yeah, this card's, this card's very good. Yeah, it's very mm-hmm. good. And a zero cost, three block. I mean, warrior cards, this is in general, block for, block really well. Um, but yeah, this card's very good. Um, I would be curious to see what happens when we finally get a dagger um, or two daggers. It sounds like daggers are also going to be kind of two-handed weapons or one-handed weapons. But yeah, I, I like this card. I just can't play it because currently my the card the, the deck that I'm working on is axes, and uh, I'm not allowed to. Okay, I will let you um, read the next one, which is Oath of Steel. Yeah, uh, Oath of Steel. This is this card's kind of highly debated. If you guys are on the the Warrior Discord, uh, I defend this card. I like this card. A lot of people do not. Uh, but Oath of Steel is a zero cost, three block warrior action. Whenever you attack with a weapon this turn, put a plus one counter on it. At the beginning of your end phase, remove all plus one counters from weapons you control. Go again. So this is not a Dawnblade card because you do not want to remove those plus one counters. Uh, this is a two-handed weapon card for sure. And here's the math, right? In Flesh and Blood, we've kind of gotten in this cycle where you play a zero cost, you think it's going to add plus three. That's kind of the math that we've all fallen in love with, right? Zero for three. And so if you're playing axes or sabers for instance let's say you just have one go again you get plus one for the first swing you get plus one for the second swing so that's zero for two that would be inefficient all right now if you attack again for the third time now you get another counter and now it's a zero for four so now you're above that threshold so you if you can guarantee you attack three times with your weapons you're a zero for four, which is a very good card, potentially a broken card. Here's the reason I like it for axes. Even if I'm not attacking three times, I play this card first. I attack with my first axe. Now I'm attacking for three instead of two. Whatever. They can block it with one card. The key is if I can give my first axe go again, now I'm swinging for four. That's a break point. Okay. And granted, Warrior doesn't have a lot of on hit effects, so break points aren't as necessary as some other classes. But I can go over tops of blocks. I can chip damage away. Axes can play very defensive if they have to. So that's why I really like this card. If I can get to that third swing, then I know that I'm getting mega value from it. But making that second axe swing a break point is very good. So I like this card. I don't know if it's a three of. I tested it today with a one of because that's all I pulled. Um, but I like this card more than most. I know a lot of people are down on it, but I'm a fan. Yeah, I don't, again, because I'm extremely uneducated, I had to read this thing like six times, and then I realized like what you were saying. The, so the first axe would get a counter, the second axe would get a counter, and then when you swung again, then it would have two counters, so that's where you got the math of essentially it's a zero for four over right the, over the long run um yes yeah pretty good interesting definitely it's interesting. interesting um would and, and couldn't this be like um good in like um like a bolton axes because he wants like um like a bolton. so i think the max value on this is actually the bolton combo with the sabers where you can continue sabers, yeah swing in one 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 with lumina turns then this card goes crazy because you're just continuously adding ones and you're not losing them so the dream scenario is bolton sabers um yeah i i this card's this card's very interesting i know it's highly debated okay well i think that was a good review of it all right i will <laughs> I'm going to read this card. It's, this, your, this, it's your girl. This Kasai specialization, blood on her hands. I, I did play a lot of Kasai Blitz. That's what I like to play when I play Blitz, which I rarely ever do. But when I do, yeah. that's what I like to play. Skirmish um, season's coming up, baby. You got zero her again. cost warrior action. There's a lot here. It's an additional cost to play blood on her hands. Destroy any number of copper you control. 
For each copper destroyed this way, choose a mode. You may choose each mode twice. Target one hand weapon has plus one while attacking this turn. Target one hand weapon has go again while attacking this turn. Target one hand weapon may attack twice this turn. And then this itself has go again. Blocks for three. This is good. This guy's never... fucked up. Yeah, that's really good. So, like, obviously, you don't want to see this early. But after no. you, after you've, you know, made a handful if you can, of... If you, can make, if you can make six copper. Yeah, I think it's also, like, um, when you're playing Blitz sometimes, like, um, you, you either hit your cash out or you don't. And then, like, this... This lets you then, uh, like, if if cash out opportunity has gone by, you, you, maybe you got maybe you only run like two or something, and you you got them both cash, or, cash early. Cash in, cash okay. in, cash in. You know what I meant. Cash cash out is a new card in this set. Cash in is all you're. Yeah, about yeah. That. Sorry, yeah. Ca cash in. The yellow one from you know. Yeah, uh, Cruise, Yeah, Crucible. If you miss that option, and then. You're you're still like okay, well I'll just cash in, uh, cash out, whatever it is, cash in all these <laughs> copper tokens on on this then, because uh, you do have to do that. It's an additional cost to play, right? Destroy. Any I mean, like, number. I think if you, I mean, not even if you get six, but giving each each saber automatically go again, or each saber automatically plus one, or mm. each saber automatically being able, like if you do. Each saber has go again, and each saber can attack twice. You're gonna end up for four, like for four copper. Yeah, that's, that's just. That's I mean, amazing. that's it's crazy. That's yeah. just four resources for that. Like, and if you have courage and you break courage, like, dude, now they're all swinging for free with go again. That's what are your, crazy. What are your thoughts on them dedicating a majestic slot to a blitz character? I think it's fine. I mean, I don't hate it. I don't hate it as much as I know a lot of people are disappointed in, but the LSS came out. They said, hey, we're giving support to everybody. Uh, now, <laughs> if I were to pull, I got lucky. My first case, I pulled one Kasai, one KO, one Data Dial, uh one whatever other uh benji right like i pulled one of each all their specializations oh so if i were to waste I, I i'm sure lss printed it in a way that they made sure that that was kind of the, the pull rate but like if i were to pull multiple of these per case yeah, i would be right, upset uh, yeah. you know mm -hmm. so i like that they did this i wish they were rares they didn't necessarily have to be majestics because you know, when you rip it and it's a majestic slot, it's such a feel bad. But because you want, like, you know, you want other things. So that, I think these could have been rares and it would have been better received, I think. But like between this and also the heroes, aside from Starvo, Bravo, like, you know, you're pulling like Genus, Icelander, uh, Valda. Benji, Kasai, Dude, whatever, no. KO, and whoever. So that's seven. That's seven majestics. majestics that you like kind of feel shitty about pulling. <laughs> like, you don't ever want to pull two Valdas, two yeah. Icelanders, or two Genuses. That's yeah. terrible. Even two Bravos, but Bravos, whatever. He fetches yeah. a price and he's cool. But that's still, that's four that you absolutely can't have two of. And then on top of that, you have these guys. It's just, it's kind of a feel bad set. Yeah. It's like, or a feel bad, not set. I shouldn't say set. It's yeah, a feel I know, bad. Like just, uh, what they decided to do with having the specializations, especially for the Blitz characters. But if, again, that's us talking through a window. I, we hardly I like, play, I like, yeah, I like that they supported the young guys. Like, I love it. Mm. I love that. I just wish they were rares. That's it. All right. So m moving on to our second, second to last card. Um, I'll let you read this one because I don't even know if I've read this yet at all. So go ahead and educate me on what Shatter does. Shatter. Do attack, attack reaction. Uh, zero cost, three block, yellow pitch. Until the end of the turn. Target two-handed weapon gains whenever this would deal damage. 
Instead, you may destroy a defending equipment with defense less than the damage that would be dealt this way. So, this card, I'm glad that it, it exists. This card, it, it fills a space that I think Warrior needed to, to have. Whether or not this card has play yet is going to uh, be determined. But I will say, my favorite part about this card is I don't think that they intended this card to be a Dawnblade card. And they currently, you know, it's a, this card is it's almost like, like one of those cards where it's future. like, invest now. Because there's going to be a two-handed weapon that's going to come out. I mean, it's very Savage Lands, dude. Like, look at this bone axe, two-handed axe. We've never seen a two-handed axe. We're going to get a two-handed axe. Like, we're going to get a, a new thing. Yeah, like a different type this... of warrior that can use this. That yes. That would be really good. This yeah. is like, hey, Dawnblade, whatever. That's the only two-handed weapon you have now. Raiden, I guess. Raiden 2. But it's like, just wait you're going to get something that this is going to be extremely relevant. That, that's what excites me about this card. I mean, it's a cool card. I'm glad that this card exists because Warrior needs that kind of like, hey, don't block this shit with like equipment because now I'm going to destroy your equipment. And that's what's really cool. About so it has card. to, yeah, so you're saying this only works this on... Card's like, this card's spooky. This card's like going to be the ultimate spooky card where it's like, People are going to be really. I don't think yet. It's not saying, yet because you're, yeah. But you're like there's going to be people are be hesitant to block with their best equipment piece because this card exists. Because you can play this and then go over the top. And granted, you're not doing damage, but it's like now I'm destroying your tectonic plating. Now I'm destroying your you know ramper to the ram's head. Now I'm destroying your scab skin leathers. Like yeah. imagine that. Like the game is this is game altering. Right now, it seems like it's not that big of a deal. But this card right here is game-altering in the right deck. I don't think that deck exists yet. I think it will in the future. I think you're right. All right, and then finally, I just pulled one of these today. Um, Helm of Sharp Eye. Um, the cold foiling version of this looks really cool. Um, it is a warrior equipment headpiece, um, an attack reaction ability for one resource. Destroy Helm of Sharp Eye. Banish the top card of your deck. You may play it this combat chain. Activate this ability only if you can control a weapon with damage greater than twice its base damage. Battle worn one block. So you were talking to me about this because I asked you uh, where you think this fits in, um, if this is like in play for Warrior right now, um, and you you were explaining something to me that went over my head. So I'm gonna actually I've read the card, but now I'm gonna turn this over to you. So I I I will speak in kind of two different ways. I will speak in non-budget and I will speak in budget. Okay. Uh, I'm going to start with budget. I love that this card exists, and I love that they printed cards uh, like uh, Vexing Quill Hand or the, the Brood Smashing Hands, whatever the mm -hmm. fuck that's called. Skull Crushers. Yeah, 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 Skull Crushers. I love that they printed new equipment um, for otherwise usually expensive slots for different classes, and this is no exception because, you know, traditionally the Warrior competitive... Uh, helm has always been skullcap so this is kind of a this is a budget alternative um so I, I i'm very grateful that this exists so from a budget standpoint you have to build your deck around this right first off you can only activate this attack reaction if your weapon is more than twice your base attack so for instance if you're if you have dawn blade you need to have an attack, you have to have built that up to a 7 in order to trigger this. So, a sharpened steel and a singing steel blade. Then you also now have to have a reaction or a, a resource available in order to trigger this. You have yeah. to get up to 7. Yeah, but, you have... but Raiden, 0 times 0 yes. is 0, baby. Or 0 times 2 is 0, baby. Correct. So, if you if you can pump your Raiden to 1, 
it's automatically triggered. So this is a very good Bolton card to look at because Raiden, if you charge, is automatically a three. So this card is always live with Raiden um, and Bolton. So if you if you have an axe, if you can get that axe up to five, which is not hard, or a Centauri Saber, get it up to five, it's not hard, you can trigger this. Here's the problem. If you tra trigger this card as an attack reaction and you trigger a non-attack action, such as Sharpened Steel, Spoils of War, anything like that, you cannot play it because it has to be played to the combat chain. Therefore, if you were to play a non-attack action, that combat would that chain previously would break and making that card illegal. So this card is a casino card unless you built your entire deck around it. You can play attack actions, which... Check reactions, right? You can play attack actions and attack reactions to that combat chain. So I see this more as a Bolton because he has a lot of uh, attack actions. Dorinthia does not run a lot of attack react or attack actions. She runs a decent amount of attack reactions. Um, but I would say this card fits more of the Bolton uh, mm -hmm. archetype, the Bolton fixture, whatever, or equipment suite. I don't know if this is an Dorinthia card. I like that this card exists. But to my non-budget players, the players that, you know, have everything, you are never having playing this card over Skull, Skullcap, ever. This card's not even sideboarded in Dorinthia. Um, I, I, if you want to get cute with Stroke, I just don't think it's worth it. I honestly don't think it's worth it in Dorinthia. Bolton, you can make a case, for sure. Uh, I love this card's art. I want the, I just traded for a, a cold foil version of this because I really like it, but it's not playable in Durantia. Um, and I don't, I don't, I, don't, I just don't think it's, it's a but great like card. You said, it has a place in, in the game, in the grand scheme. It exists. I'm glad that it, it exists, especially yeah. for players that are just starting out because this is going to be super affordable for, you know, if you want a majestic helm that blocks for one and sticks around, I'm so happy that this exists. It's better than iron rot. Um, yeah, if you're a non-budget player, then you don't play this card. Mm -hmm. All right, so you you let it off. I'll close it out. Um, with the with the return of the roundtable of Wraith, we are going to be trying to make some more content again. I, I also do want to add to to Ryan's earlier point, as you've been wondering why we might have been gone, is. Uh, majority of people that work on this channel are school teachers and when we started the channel we were all on summer break and so it was like we, hey, we fucked you, up it was, like, yeah. it was like what are you doing today i don't know nothing let's make a video oh okay and so now and then when the school year started it's not a coincidence that you know we did those major events and the school year started and then you know we pulled back on the creation of content so that's probably another reason due to the slowdown. Um, but that is, that was then, this is now we're putting our, you know, foot down on the gas and we're going to be, um, putting out some content, hopefully getting you some gameplay and, uh, just making more videos like this. So like Ryan said, at the beginning, please comment, um, have, di uh, you know, dialogue with us. We enjoy it. Um, I like all these cards. Any any closing comments? Warriors back? Warrior, dude, Warriors back. Like that's <laughs> the most exciting thing is like Warrior is back. And that's that's the cool thing. Is like she's kind of been she, Dorinthia has been kind of like, you know, pushed to the side a little bit. She's playable. And I think I think she's good. Very very good. Yeah. yeah. All right, well, catch us in our next video. I don't know what class we're doing next, but we could pump these out. We're ready to go. So uh, stay tuned in the coming days for the next uh, class card discussion from Emberfest. We'll see you on the next one.